let's be honest, we're all here to see Kenya introduce this mystery husband, so let's get into it. <sighs> okay, so I'm not sure if I don't want to believe it, but I just can't believe this storyline of Portia and Ricky Smiley. I don't know, it just doesn't seem real to me, it just doesn't seem authentic, and I just cannot see... To be real, Portia like being into him for real, for real. You know what I mean? Ricky Smiley is a fun guy, attractive man, but I just, I don't see it. It's so weird. I don't know if it's the age difference. I don't know what it is, but I just, it it doesn't read real to me. Their scenes are like, and then they're at like this empty skating, bowling, I don't want to say bowling alley. What is it called? Skating ring and it, it just all seems so produced. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm so happy that Kenya uh, has found love. I just can't take the fact where everything, and I get it, all of our girlfriends do this when they first get married. Everything becomes about the husband and being a wife, and every sentence that Kenya, you know, speaks out of her mouth, it's about how hard it is to be a wife, and mark this, and mark that, and I'm a wife, and I gotta do this because I'm a wife. <laughs> It's so annoying, but every girl does it. Every, like, newlywed uh, woman does it. It's so annoying, though. But, like, just listen to her. Like, you want to be happy for her. And I am. But I'm like, girl, if you don't stop acting like you are the first woman in the world who has become a wife and have to tell everybody how difficult it is so that they can learn from your wisdom of being a wife. People have been here before, sweetie. They've done it better. Shay. Wait, did I miss the part where Kim was suing Nene for defamation of character? When did they mention that? Because I totally missed that. And just listening to um, Kenya and uh, Bailey Agency, what is her name? Cynthia, talk about it. I was like, Kim is really suing somebody with everything that she has said about Nene alone. She constantly gets on camera and says that Nene is doing some kind of drugs. And that's defamation of character to me to say that she is under the influence while working and then putting out there that she's using like hard narcotics. I think Kim has a case, but I think Nene has a case. Also, although I get on Kenya a lot about, you know, being this newlywed wife and being annoying, because she is, but we all do it. Like, I, I feel like I'm probably going <laughs> to, if I'm still doing YouTube by the time I'm married, I feel like I'm going to have Kenya moments and be like, oh my goodness, guess what I did? Cooked him a meal. It's so difficult. So I'm just like joking about that. But I will say this. I love what this man has done for her personality for me on this show. I have never been a fan of Kenya on this show. I thought she was so nasty. I actually met her in person. <laughs> she was horrible, right? But I will say that I like how he's, for me, Mark is bringing out things in her that we would have never seen had he never come into her life. She would have probably just remained the villain on this show. Case in point, this uh, PSA that she's doing for domestic um, abuse survivors, I love that idea. I love hearing her talk about it. I love the work that she's putting into it. And I really love when she spoke about her own domestic um, violence situation that she went through, the abuse that she endured. And it just opened up a whole nother level to Kenya. And I feel like because the check must have been so good and enticing that she went along with this character who was a part of her. I will not say that she is not like this shady, bitter, mean person at times. Because when I did meet her, this is what she was giving off. And this was when I was doing um, press. So this was who she was. And it was not in a place where like people... Um, were watching her or whatever. It was just like a mutual environment and there were like, of course, industry people there or whatever. But it wasn't a space for her to be put on. She was just being herself and she was awful to everybody. And it wasn't that she had a bad day because people were just like, this is how she is. So I, I listen, I don't know her personally, but from my first impression of her, what she's giving off the show is who I knew her to be. However, as just somebody partial watching this show, I love just seeing this side of her. And I wish we would have got all of these levels and not getting these levels to Kenya when she's possibly going to be leaving the show. Because if her husband doesn't want to be on the show, they're not going to ask her back because she's not really giving anything villainous. And that's what they hired her to do. So it's very unfortunate, but I'm like, I'm loving this side of Kenya. I don't like her being a villain. I really, really don't. I don't like anybody being the villain on this show. What I like is it when it's being generic at times, when you do have an off day, when you do um, get into something with one of your girls when you, somebody brings somebody to the circle that you don't like. Like that stuff is real to me and it's very relatable and I can understand from that. Other times I feel like they're trying to 
push an image of someone so they can get something started in the show. Like with Marlo. I like her on the show from time to time just for the fashions and for like a quick read and then I want her out. When Marlo comes around too often, it's because you know they need somebody who is going to be messy, who is going to start fights and it's just not generic. It's uncomfortable to watch it because you see her fishing for conflict and it just, it doesn't work, right? And that's what I didn't like about Kenya on this show. I felt like she was like fishing for a conflict because that was her character. So for me, this side of Kenya, I applaud it. I want more of it. I don't know if it's just his personality. Maybe I'm biased by that, but I just don't feel like Don Juan is good for Candy. And to be, to be fair, I'm going based off of what he shows on this show, okay? He might be great at business. I don't see it on this show because in this opening conversation with him and Candy at Candy Code Factory, Candy is talking to him about buying more property because Google is about to buy property on the same strip that they're on. He's discouraging her from buying property in the same area where Google is about to buy property. Any genius, any simple-minded person knows that that is a smart, move to buy a property if you're going to be on the same strip as freaking Google. The property value is going to go up. It's going to like skyrocket. If she buys an apartment complex, she could be getting three times the amount of money that she would get before Google was there. Like, I mean, I just don't understand why he would discourage her from doing it. And I kind of feel like she's listening to him and I'm just like, Candy, you need somebody else in your circle who is speaking in your ear. Somebody, I feel like Candy needs somebody who just knows a bit more in business than she does. You know what I mean? I don't know if she has mentors or anything, but I feel like she needs to have somebody who really works in this, you know, in the industries that she's trying to conquer because I feel like she hires a lot of her friends because they're loyal to her and that's great. I feel like you should hire your family or loyal people in certain aspects, you know what I mean? Like right now my sister's my manager. I trust her with things that um, um, a manager would do. She has other clients. She is an experienced manager. She knows what she's doing. You know what I mean? Like you can't just hire people because you trust them and, or you love them and you have a good relationship with them and hire them to work in an area they are not trained in. They have no wisdom in because they will steer you astray because I'm sitting here enraged watching this conversation and I'm like, Candy, I hope you did not listen to him and I hope you bought two more properties on that same strip because you are going to triple your profits. And in that same breath, as I watched the scene a bit more, I realized why Don Juan is in Candy's circle because Candy is feeling bad about, you know, removing Nene from the tour or having, you know, have, having brought somebody on and having them have to be removed from the tour because of some things that she said that was inappropriate to a heckler and like Candy and Todd are like, oh no, you know, she should have stayed and was a heckler. It is what it is. And then Don Juan is just like, no, business is business. However, knowing how the Candy Factory works from just watching the show, I feel like it was a setup scene to again, this is what Candy does. She hires people or has people in her family who will make her look very angelic so that all the heat is taking off of her. So Don Juan is saying probably what she was thinking or said and maybe secret. He's saying it in public so he can take the heat off of Candy for, you know, maybe her fans or off of, um, off of Candy for Nene's fans who may be coming after her to be like, oh, look, Candy is feeling bad. But if you listen to Don Juan, he was somebody who was very supportive of that decision. So don't be mad at Candy, be mad at Don Juan. And I'm just like, I don't know if they're, if they're playing that game or if it's just this is his role keeping her on track. I feel like it's the first. I feel like they're playing the game. And I've just always felt that way. I felt like her, her team says on the show what she cannot say because she wants to keep up a certain image. I'm not hating. That's very smart. Like everybody has a team that takes the heat. There's always somebody in your team that takes the heat so the star can always look angelic and pure and sweet so that everybody will always love her. I'm pretty sure that there's somebody and Beyonce's team, probably her publicist, who takes all the heat because anything, like, because Beyonce gets like a lot of hate. <laughs> I'm a Bayhawks fan, so I don't understand why she's everything. But there are people who hate on her and I get at sometimes she probably might want to respond and might want to go after them, but that changes her image because although she is a light-skinned black woman, she is still a black woman and she has to walk a fine line to receive the same benefits as her white uh, counterpart. So, I don't know if that's what's happening there. I'm not hating on it, but I think that's what's happening. Smart, because when I get to a certain status, I'm gonna have somebody in my team. I'm not gonna be clapping back because I can't do that. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna have to walk a certain light. You know what I mean? These YouTube videos are gonna get real sweet. <laughs> 
if I'm still here. No, I will be here. I'm loyal to this. I'm loyal to you guys. Yeah, I'll still be here. I might be a little bit sweeter. We'll see. Maybe not. I'm too shady. <laughs> oh, gosh. What, Sheree? I think for me, I want to hold on to this being storyline her and this man in prison. Because, honey, word on the street is that he's doing 10 years and she's building him a man cave. I, I just, I don't understand women who get into relationships with men who are incarcerated for a very long time because it's, the relationship isn't real. The thing about it is these men are trapped away in this like facility that messes with your psyche. When they come out, they're not well. Like prison, well, at least in America, I'm not talking about Norway, because have you seen the locked up in Norway? Lock me up in Norway, that's like an Airbnb. Anyway, American prison, the men, the women, people in general who are in prison in, Americans, in American prisons are not rehabilitated. They are like tortured and they are not well when they come out. They all need some type of help and therapy before they can be acclimated back into society because they've experienced sometimes years and years of abuse and torture in this system. So I just don't understand being in a relationship with somebody who is not giving you their true self. They're giving you this self of this being of an idea of the partner that you want because they're lonely and they like your attention and affection. You're not really spending time with them to really know who they really are. Now, she was involved with him before he got locked up. We That was stated in the show. However, he's been locked up for a while now and going on like 10 years or so, he's not gonna be the same person. Prison changes you. You are never the same person when you come out. Now, yes, he's in there for a white collar crime, but we don't know what kind of criminals he's in there with. Like, we don't know about the facility where he's housed. So I just, it's so weird to me that she is serious about this man and building him a man cave. So I can't wait for you. You're going to wait 10 years to build him a man cave? And she's like, oh, I need him to come out within this year. And I'm like, not for that kind of crime. <laughs> You gonna do some years for frauding the government. That's just the way it works. You, nobody is doing months. Not even white men do months for frauding the government. That is the only place that they give fair uh, jail sentences to people when you mess with the government. That's the only time. Any other time is flexible. When you mess with the government, you are doing the equal, equal amount of time. You're rich, white, wealthy, uh, black, poor, br whatever. You're going to do the same amount of time if you mess with the government. So I don't know what's going on up here. I'm hoping next season she moves on from this because this is starting to get sad. Before I was watching, I'm just like, storyline. Now I'm watching and I'm just like, oh, this is so sad. Cairo, get your mother. I'm concerned. Oh my gosh. And I hope she does not marry him. Oh, that would be the saddest Real Housewives of Atlanta moment ever if she marries this man. By the way, I'm drinking a, um, I don't know if you can see it. I'm drinking a ginger, <laughs> I'm drinking a ginger, mango, and banana, and orange smoothie. I'm getting over the flu, so I'm trying to like keep it, you know, I'm on this vegetable diet, so I'm trying to keep it cute. But um, it's helping. It's working. It cleans you right out. You put ginger in anything, and I'm telling you, instant laxative. That was too much information, but listen, we're family at this point. I swear that Nene's son is just morphing into his father. Body type, mannerisms, voice. If you go back and listen to Greg and then listen to uh, Nene's son, Brent, what is his name? Something. Little Greg, the same exact voice. It's Honestly, kind of scary. I'm sorry, and I could be in the minority here, but I enjoyed the show when Kim is not a part of it. When she is cut out of the show, we get so many levels of the ladies that we normally do not focus on because they're fighting, you know, this this clan member in a wig. <laughs> sorry. Because for me personally, I'm glad that we were able to check in on Noel because I was very concerned about um, what Cynthia was doing with her, how she was allowing her to go down to Tennessee or wherever to go live with her boyfriend. And I just felt like she was just so young to do that and have like the support of her parents. And I get that, you know, 
when kids become a certain age, they start to do whatever they want. There's some things they got to do on their own and learn and fail and all of those things. But I just felt like Cynthia was so supportive of it. I never saw any kind of, that's not smart. You know, that really doesn't make sense for you to be removing yourself from your life here and going, not going to school, not, you know, pursuing any type of career, but going down to Tennessee to go live with some boy. I just was so concerned about the direction that she was having in her life because it just seemed like both of her parents were on board with it. So I was glad to have a checkup on Noelle and see that she's like back in school. She's taking, um, she's in an internship right now. Whew, Cause I was concerned. I was really concerned. I was just like, Cynthia, you're not gonna say anything about her, you know, moving down, like fresh out of high school, moving down to Tennessee to go live with some boy, like, what black parent does that? It just didn't make any sense to so me. I was glad to be able to see Noelle doing well. You know what I mean? And it just seems like this episode is a lot lighter. And I like the balance. I really, really do like the balance from this show. But I feel like every time Kim is on, it becomes so negative. And last season was so negative. I hated the show. I even hated my reviews sometimes because I felt so bummed out by the episode that I was like trying to find you know, fun things to talk about. And there was none. And I feel like when Kim comes around, I get that, that last season ugliness back. And I, that's the one thing I don't like about the show. And I don't want back on here. Vegetarians eat eggs. Oh, <laughs> Sheree. Tyrone is a scammer from Philadelphia. Girl, you're not ready. You're not ready for that kind of scammer. I'm telling you, he's a scammer from Philadelphia who then went to Atlanta and scammed. He is a professional, sis, run. You not ready for that type, that level of scammation. You need to get out of this now, especially while you still got that chateau. So to elaborate on why I enjoy the show when Kim is in here, we get this whole PSA storyline with Kim, and I talked about it earlier, but just the scene with her just meeting the ladies and the ladies talking about the situation, and then we get a clip of her watching Shamia's footage, and I just, I don't know, even at uh, the actual screening, everybody was so encouraging and kind and I get it we tune in for the shade the mess and the drama but we like balance we like a balance to the show and that's what they've been missing for so long it also should be noted that this is the best that a lot of them have looked in a very long time specifically Cynthia and Candy I love their looks I really felt like they put on some good garments and had good hair had good makeup I really liked it. I was looking at this like, this is a really nice um outfit for a PSA screening. I thought it was the Grammys. So the PSA was really, really cute. I like the fact that they were able to bring light to something that is really, really important um, on this show. Now that that's out the way, let's talk about Mark. I wasn't expecting that voice or him to have gotten a nose piercing in the village. <laughs> handsome guy and um he makes Kenya happy so I don't think the girls should be hating on that but you know they all shady they all bitter because they haven't you know been invited to the wedding I think they'll get over it in time if she's still on the show I really don't think she's coming back next season but um I'm happy that she's happy to be quite honest with you I don't like I told y'all I don't like her miserable she is not a good cast member miserable she is just nasty with no purpose like you can give me nasty you can give me shade you can give me petty you can give me messy just have a purpose other than starting drama for no reason it's un unnerving for me to watch because I just it's so you know I'm, I'm, I'm an actor right so you already got to convince me to a certain point that stuff is real and I take it with a grain of salt that's why I talk about these shows because I know it's not real you know what I mean if this was intervention I wouldn't be talking about the show because I'm not gonna be talking about people's real problems I know enough to know uh and behind the scenes about this show as well that a lot of it is not you know it's scripted it is what it is it's a show right but when you put on so much where I can't even enjoy it because I see you acting it just, it takes you out of it for me. So I like to see her at least authentically acting and she seems to be very happy with this guy. And I like this storyline, but I know unfortunately for her, that's not what they hired her to do. So she may not be coming back. She may not even be invited back to be quite honest with you. One thing I'm gonna miss about Kenya on this show, cause I don't think she's coming back. I'm real talk. I'm gonna miss her reads because the way she just read Sheree's boyfriend. My man is real just like his checks. I can't say the same for your boyfriend. I felt like her reads were always so well thought out and just cut. 
I'm gonna miss him. I really, really That's am. That's basically where it ends. It ends with the ladies being introduced to uh, Mark. And honestly, I think they wanted to go in, but they saw how happy Kenya was and they saw just how much, you know, that Mark was really supportive. I, I do think that she was a little extra. Men are not normally like that. Women are always so extra because that's who we are. That's why you guys love us. <laughs> Girl, it's like, oh, that's not me. And, it, you know, we're always like that. So I didn't expect for him to be, you know, all over her. And I feel like if he was, then it would have been like, oh, he's an opportunist. Now he's laid back. He's not into her. We will never really know. But I do think that because she was in such a good space and because this was such a positive event, the ladies didn't go in like I think they probably would have had they been in a different setting. But anyway, that's where it ends. Next week is the season finale. I had no idea. I do feel like this show has been on for a very long time. Um, I don't think that it was all that interesting, which is why probably sometimes my reviews were late because I really had to like watch it a few times to really get something to talk to you guys about. Because before when I used to review the show, I couldn't wait to like get in front of my camera so we can like discuss now it. Now it's just like, oh, there are some important moments that I want to talk to my viewers about, but not like the whole episode. And it used to be like that. I feel like they're trying to find their footing um, with so many changes happening with the ladies of this show. And I think at this time, it's probably the best to move on from this cast and get some hungrier people in Atlanta who want to make a name for themselves and who will be very open and honest and raw. And give us a good show because I think that this cast is officially done. I feel that way with all the uh, Real Housewife franchises, but some um, sex of the franchise. But I feel like some ladies will never let this show go. Like Vicki Gumbelson will never let this show go. Vermona Singer will never let this show go. Teresa Judice, she can't let this show go. You know what I mean? So I just feel like we're always going to get like some old broads on there. Not old in age, but just like old in this show. But I do think it's time to like freshen it up. So we'll see what, where they'll go next season. Anyway, the season finale is next week. It doesn't look that interesting, but I am interested to see uh, Kim and Nene discuss Roachgate or whatever. That's the only thing I'm really interested in seeing. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on with Cynthia, but she is giving me beyond curious at this point. I'm like, honey, just take the plunge because you keep on playing in this like mass film pond. And I'm like, just do it. Go, go full throttle and stop playing. Just do it so you can find out if it's for you or not, because you have been skirting on the like sidelines, you know, <laughs> with this lady pond for a while. So I'm like, honey, if you're going to do it, do it. If not, leave us alone with this storyline. Anyway, that's all I have to talk about. I will see you next week for the season finale of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys then. Oh, also, let me know what you want me to review. I watch a lot of these shows, but some shows people don't like. So, or, or watch as much as I do. So I don't really like put up reviews of it. But I have been hearing people who wanted me to do Vanderpump again but I'm not not a lot of you guys watch it so let me know what you guys do watch and if I watch it I'll start reviewing that for you if I'm not doing it here already because I like to cultivate this show to my audience you know what I mean like you guys are subscribed to me and giving me views I want to give you a good show so let me know what you want and tell me in the comment section below as well as let me know what you thought about this episode and I will see you next week bye guys